Hi friends, very exciting as guess who received <laughs> their Lisa Eldridge parcel but first, if it's your first time here, hi. I'm Alicia, thank you so much for clicking on my video. And if you are returning, well, thank you for visiting me again. Kinky Sweat stands for my kinky hair and sweat life. I'm a fitness professional who loves things, all movement and beauty. If you wanna check out what I do in between the makeups, you can head over to my Instagram. The Lisa Eldridge goods have arrived. Therefore, this will be a first impressions, not a first impressions on the brand as I have ordered Lisa's uh, lipsticks, gloss and brace that released this past last fall yes but this was a highly anticipated release as many of us were awaiting lisa's creation of cheek complexion products she released two liquid blushes and the liquid highlighters as well as new shades in her satin formula i believe and new shades in her gloss and brace in addition to a couple of restocks i might have or may not have I can confirm, although they're all here, <laughs> ordered all six of the Enlivenly liquid blush. Now, is that necessary? Absolutely not, but I had to. Each color just looked <sighs> devastatingly gorgeous. In addition to those, I ordered three of the highlighters and a few of the lipsticks. So I don't want this video to be an hour long, maybe half an hour. Let's see how we can make it. I actually have to put some eyebrows on and I thought maybe we'll keep the actual makeup minimal and perhaps just apply concealer where I need it because I would love to see how the liquid blush behaves on skincare versus makeup, but we'll do both. You know what I'm saying? First, however, I'm just gonna plump these guys up. Why? Hello? Just waiting for this truck to pass by. Always. I mean, come on. Hopping straight in. First, we have the enlivening. Yes, enlivening. En enlivening. Blush that they're all currently sold out. All the shades are gone. They each retail for $34, which you get, let's see here, 15 milliliters of product or 0.5 fluid ounces. A suggested shelf life of 24 months. Pretty good for a liquid product. That's what I like to see. This cruelty-free product is vegan and free from parabens, talc, nylon 12, D65, gluten, and alcohol. But where is it made, however? All right, we could start recording again because the truck finally like turned down its humming noise. Thank you so much. Found where the enlivening blush is made. Italy. Here's the actual component. We have a plastic squeeze tube with the product showing through three quarters or, or rather one quarter of the cap, which I very, thank you, please be on your way. Get out of here. It makes it easier to detect the product from looking at the cap alone instead of having to find the name. Although you do have stickers of the shade names for each tube, so it wouldn't be that hard otherwise. Next up, the Elevated Glow Liquid Highlighter. And by the way, all these products are under the umbrella Seamless Skin by Lisa Eldridge. So I believe this is her own type of brand subcategory to where she assigns a lot of the cheek products and whatever she wishes to uh, to create for her seamless skin experience. I ordered three shades and each of the Elevated Glow Highlighter products retail for $38. Suggested shelf life of 12 months, so we got one more Gia with the liquid blush, 13 milliliters or 0.43 fluid ounces of product. And this is also made in Italy. And again, cruelty free, vegan, free from parabens, talc fragrance. Yes, fragrance free, thank goodness. Oh, is the blush fragrance free? I guess we're gonna find out soon. Gluten nylon 12 D6 and D5 free. Ooh, which one should we hop into first? But before we do that, why don't you come in a little closer <gasps> that's enough while i was waiting for the truck noise to disappear i applied pat mcgrath's concealer and m16 all over where i needed a little more coverage on my blemishes and lm12 under the eyes we have to go in with pink soap pink soap just looks so intriguing in terms of the name and the story behind it is quite nice Pink Soap is a muted, dusty rose which imparts skin with a beautifully subtle, subtle, warm pink blush. Works best on lighter to medium skin tones. Lisa named shade Pink Soap as it reminds her of a bar soap that sat in her grandmother's bathroom for seemingly years. I know that soap. 
and I love that it's called pink soap. We have a squeezy tube again. Ooh, I'm just gonna go right in. I'm like using my camera as a mirror. It, there it is. Is it coming? Yes, there it is. Ooh. In regards to the formula, however, a unique and innovative makeup skincare hybrid formula suffuse, suffuse with blurring and lifting skincare ingredients, non-greasy and non-comedogenic. The super light cream blush is incredibly easy to apply and blend. You only need the tiniest amount We'll see how far that takes us. And start building the desired intensity, all while feeling comfortable and imparting dewy hydration. Dewy hydration, a translucent, natural skin-like finish that is neither too dewy or too matte. We'll get into the skincare ingredients in a moment. Ooh, it's very, it has fragrance. Not heavy though, not as, you know, I, I'll deal with it. I definitely applied too much. So Lisa, of course, she's correct about her own product. Very accurate in saying that you need the tiniest amount as it spreads very quickly. So let me go in with my Spectrum and Katie Jane Hughes brush and just kind of tap around the edges. Well, that's beautiful. It has like a, a slickness to it that you see it spreads very quickly. So I believe that's why Lisa recommended that you only use the tiniest amount, but as she also recommended, if you need to apply a little bit more, I'm applying a little bit on the back of my hand, taking my brush and tapping on more on the apples of my cheeks. Now in terms of the blend, incredibly easy, especially with the brush. I could only imagine equally as so with the sponge, although I wouldn't want the sponge to take away any of the product, so I would insist on using a brush. And of course, you could definitely use your finger, but upon applying the product with your finger, you feel that it can get away from you quickly, which is why I like the brush. So we're gonna let this hang out for a little bit. I wanna see how it dries down, but already I can recognize the dry down, definitely natural, but the finish dewy. You can see that there's luminosity and radiance coming from my cheek, but it doesn't feel overly emollient. It has nice stay on the skin. And you can tell from this side that pink soap, at least for my skin tone, gives like a nice barely there flush. Next up, we have Dante's Dream, a beautiful tawny rosewood shade. Subtle brownie pink blush, you know the brownie pinks. I love the brownie pinks. This shade is named after a painting Lisa saw by Ros Rossetti. She saw this in the gallery as a teenager and the painting, especially the colors, made a big impression on Lisa at the time. All right, Dante's dream. This might be like the bay shade. I feel in my, oh. <laughs> but you gotta shake it a little bit. You gotta shake it a little bit. So just so you see, if I use my finger, see how it's like, the spread happens fast. So therefore, I'm gonna use my brush. So I definitely applied way too much. <laughs> I underestimated uh, my squeezing strength. I'm actually going in with another brush. This is the Spectrum and Katie Jane Hughes number one. Just so I could take away a little bit of the product, but it wasn't too much of a disaster. So you saw, despite the fact that I had a lot on my cheeks, I was able to salvage it pretty quickly. Oh, that's pretty. Ooh, I love Dante's Dream. That's like the perfect summer burnt pink look. Pink soap is cool. I like pink soap a lot, but Dante's Dream. I'm just gonna give this a little shake and apply a touch more on the apples of my cheeks. This is coming out a little liquidy. I think maybe it separated some. Perhaps that's the nature of the formula, but no matter, I'll work with it, it's fine. I'm just pressing it here, put a little bit above the brow. Oh, that's perfect. I like this color a lot. It just, it, it appears like I'm creating this flush all by myself. It looks beautifully natural 
and again I love the finish of it it's so summer perfect in that sure you could go in and powder if you like if you want less do absolutely for instance if you will go in on your favorite tinted moisturizer uh tint foundation going with the enlivening blush and then maybe lightly powder after just to keep everything in place and the texture is incredibly smooth and yes i i get the blurring i do it definitely helps to kind of like knock out some of that crazy crave from your face here we have pink soap again on this side and dante's dream on the other these definitely lean a little more natural in terms of tone so why don't we take this off and try on the next two next up we have pink poetry a warm tone bright pink in part skin with a refreshingly pretty true pink blush a poetic pink that seems to be infused with joy and laughter <laughs> i learned my lesson i'm gonna go in a little bit no there's the oil i see i see i see i gotta go back and and take a look at the ingredients again there's a little bit of the pigment there we go i feel confident in using my finger now for this one Oh boy, Lisa was not kidding, man, about using sparingly. This is definitely, definitely the pinkity pink, pink, pink. Again, going in with the KJH number one, just to softly blur the edges. But now, I mean, you see this is pink. Perfect if you want to go, you know, Marie Antoinette about things pull it across the nose and just go wild with this color i think very much accurate in this shade description to say like poetic pink like true true pink i'm gonna knock down a little bit from under the eyes i think i brought it up a little too high that's better next up we have mountain walk an intense blue base raspberry pink that imparts skin with a freshly flushed cheek rodolent of a brisk walk outdoors i love the dolomites in the mountainous northern italy there is a particular flush to the cheeks after an early morning hike and i wanted to recapture in the shade this looks like it's gonna give me something crazy like the look at the color wow i'm gonna just get it on there hello i feel like that's already gonna be too much just based on how little you should use these suckers are gonna last forever Woo! i'm picking up the blue base all right this is very like wow this is very like fall for me anyway i love these types of shades for the fall season but you can use them whenever you want oh boy if you ever wanted to kind of chime down your blush you'll go in with the sponge or brush you use to apply your foundation with and then you can go back in if you wanted to just punch up oh that's pretty at first i was like oh boy but i can totally see like the tone is gorgeous it's the blue based raspberry but it still works for summer because the flush is just so vibrantly rich and i think true to like what flush looks like on on different skin tones and different cheeks i like the pink but i'm feeling this color a lot again here's pink poetry on this side of my face and mountain walk on this side it's truly remarkable and i'm actually quite impressed by this texture that lisa created i think very much aligns with the description of being dewy but not or not dewy not too matte i think the dry down is sublime for like that skin like finish and also ideal for several skin conditions especially if you're on the drier part of the spectrum and if you're not and you're more oily i think this will do incredibly well on top of powder so that the first powder layer can kind of take away some of that emolliency from the formula and maybe it dry down a little more matte or you could just lightly powder but i still think the the liquid blush will maintain some of those dry down properties for it to still look luminous on the skin all right all right we got two mo I'm gonna take this off mountain walk surprised me i knew i was gonna love all the colors but there's always one that surprises you in terms of like your expectations just being blown out of the water oh we're up to the party time shade island glow a warm bright coral the 
the bright corals get me fam that imparts skin with a deliciously sunny warm blush looks great on olive medium and deeper skin tones there is a tone of coral that always reminds me of slow paced relaxing sunny days in hot climates this is it lisa says you know what i cannot wait i cannot wait let's get this on oh i might have to be a little come on mix it up with them oils man i might be a little more generous with island glow considering the fact that i just love bright coral anything and to finally have this in and on the cheeks so we're gonna get it's always like that first press i don't want to say the other word just to mix up the product but oh boy here it comes Ooh, this it's just, I'm telling you, anytime we encounter the corals, man, it is always a well-received parte. Completely and utterly perfect. The tone, the burnt, sun-kissed look. This is like the category that I can't get enough of in terms of emulating, like Lisa had described, just slow-paced, relax under the sun you know in the water whatever body of water you prefer pool ocean or lake i'm putting good put on a little bit more i just want a little bit more here on the very tops of the apples of the cheeks and i'm actually going to use my finger because i really want to bump up the vibrancy here i want to see what island glow can do oh bit on my nose oh yeah Oh yeah, this is it. Th this, this right here, this is it. This might have to be, well, because it's summer right now in NYC, so this is this is the vibe that I'm living in right now, and what a beautifully gorgeous color. And I'm just, don't mind me, I'm just going back and forth between my brushes just to kind of diffuse the edges. And again, the texture is phenomenal. Keep in mind, I'm putting on little concealer, just enough to even out my skin tone. So I appreciate how the blush works on semi-bare skin, not completely, of course, because I do still have some makeup on. But that's one of the reasons why I like to rely on a cream or liquid blush, because if I don't insist or feel like applying a complexion product, to see how a product works on bare-ish skin and it provides a little bit of that blurring in the product itself, very helpful. Last one. Ooh, ooh. Venetian red. This sounds intriguing, fam. All right, Venetian red is a rich red brown, which imparts all skin tones with a red earthy realness. Okay. Fascinated by aged pigments and particularly colors used by Renaissance painters. Lisa, I get it, friend. These shades are just so well thought out. And this is another reason going on in the Lisa tangent. Why I appreciate the shades from Lisa. I mean, I get it if you're not super in love with her products or her formula, but you got to give it to her when it comes to the inspiration and just how precise it is. Like you understand the vision because she sets it out for you. She illustrates it so beautifully well and it gets you excited about the actual color. You know what I mean? I feel like Maybe I gotta put Venetian Red a little higher. Remember that song from Gloria Estefan for the Olympics? <laughs> I listened to that song non-stop when it first came out. Anyway, Venetian Red. Oh, oh. Can you imagine this with, which is it? Dante's Dream. <gasps> Dante's Dream a little lower. Oh, Venetian Red. I don't know, man. This is, this is hard. Venetian red is pretty. It's giving you blush, but like still looking earthy as again, the description says that reddish tone is just perfect. I wanna apply a little bit more and I'm doing so first on the back of my hand so I can better control the, the distribution and the blend, picking it up with my brush and then going in on these cheeks look i definitely applied way too much don't underestimate the amount of the blush you think you need to apply you do need very little and if you insist on building only take a little bit at a time because 
it might look like oh my gosh in the beginning but see how it just spreads and blends it looks very even and it just kind of like diffuses into this beautiful flush that's even in application luminous and radiant and finish i can't get enough bring it up and around here a little bit oh that's this is hard i said island glow was it but i don't know man venetian red is doing things dante's dream just right here on the cheeks Ooh, i might be going overboard but that's okay with me oh going over everything hmm again we have island glow on this side of the face with venetian red on the other side <sighs> venetian red is very pretty very very pretty oh we're getting cool it's okay maybe you can better detect the differences between the two but i really love the formula in terms of it just being yes a liquid blush yes it spreads it has a lot of slip but the dry down is gorgeous i think it's time that we get into these elevated glow highlighters i cannot wait and i'm happy that i saw and i would actually will post lisa's links down below that where she describes her products because i think it's important to understand what her perspective is so you know what to expect from the product let's first go in with crystal nebula but i wanted to briefly cover this this new technology she's using elevated glow not only gives your skin that amplified sheeny summer glow it is also it also contains a biopolymer called filamexo which forms an invisible mesh imparting skin with a smoothing and subtle tight tightening effect along with calming hydrating and moisturizing ingredients like tamarind seed oat kernel extract and glycerin mm. Mm. oh briefly going over these ingredients Let's see here. The fun ingredients are after the fifth, so they're beyond the five. Again, I usually don't rely on makeup to provide my skincare benefits, although I understand people like, it's like a security blanket, right? Whatever makeup you're applying, you know it's not gonna do any damage. It's not gonna, it's, you're not gonna have a net loss of raspberry seed oil, but it's nice to know that your skin's not gonna be dry, it's going to be nourished somewhat while you wear this product. So again, this is a perspective I, I always share no matter what product I encounter that have similar claims. Again, skincare benefits with the makeup is fine, just, just give me the shine. The Elevated Glow comes in a frosted glass bottle with a frosted gold cap. Brushed, brushed gold? This looks ultra luxe feels heavy Ooh, i'm excited to get into it crystal nebula is a light golden champagne and beautifully complements light skin tones you know what we're gonna see how how complimentary it is oh that's a big doe foot applicator that's a big mama jama point i was making before and i interrupted myself i'm so dumb this is meant to be used as a highlighter on the high points of your face versus maybe like the auric where i use to combine with my foundation or then maybe apply on the tops of the cheekbones this is meant again to be applied on the high points of highlight and not necessarily used to be mixed with other complexion products oh this is pretty that was pretty this was very easy to blend out wow look at that shine as beautiful glow glass-like in finish does not look overly shimmerly overly pearly sparkly wow. the dry down natural in finish not sticky whatsoever doesn't feel like there's too much slip oh boy I'm in trouble. This is absolutely gorgeous. I'm kicking myself because I didn't want to get Celestial Fire. It's the bronzier one because I'm like, well, you're not gonna wear it. Like I used the darker auric shade to kind of contour with. 
and I didn't want to do that with celestial fire but I could have worn it on like my cheeks that's still doing a lot though Alicia it's okay next up cosmic rose a light medium rosy gold that beautifully complements light to medium skin tones let's see how this compares to what was it crystal nebula yes I definitely detect a little more rose from this shade here oh yeah can you guys see that there's more champagne from crystal nebula and definitely more rose from as it is appropriately named cosmic rose that's pretty dare I say this might even be more appropriate a touch lower on the cheeks where some of that pinky hue I think will do well and the fact that I'm applying it on top of Venetian red I feel just further amplifies the rosiness of the shade oh that's pretty this is an exceptional formula I mean the fact that it's liquidy but it did not break up the enlivened the I keep saying enlivened. blush it doesn't look separated or uneven what in the graciousness of heaven don't mind me being crazily blown away let's move on to solar light i'm going to carefully wipe off crystal nebula yeah i'm not even do i want to reapply a little bit of something something i think so this is dante's dream with a little bit of poetry pink pink poetry it was on my hand for a little bit and still hasn't set so you still have you know a little bit of a play time in terms of not rushing to blend this out all right that was a fun combination just pulling it back a little bit here we go solar light is a medium golden apricot that beautifully complements tanned olive and medium skin tones let's see how this looks higher on the cheekbones maybe this will serve me better lower there's only one way to find out here we go yes it definitely appears a little more warm than the first shade. I mean, it's still shiny. I can still most definitely wear this as a highlight, but I think it also works on the very tops of my cheeks. There it is. That is absolutely beautiful. And why not? We can go in with Crystal Nebula, just top it all off right here on the center. Tappity tap tap to create like that extra bing of highlight right on the center of the cheekbone. So it's very multi-dimensional and it's just incredibly smooth, easy to apply. That's crazy. I like this effect because I think if you tend to not apply powder for highlight because you feel, especially if you are, you have dry skin, if any powder texture, no matter how smooth it claims to be, still grabs on texture, doesn't look natural, looks artificial, you're gonna love this. I mean, the way it just melts into the skin and I feel appropriately named Seamless Skin. This is what Lisa has like dedicated her entire career to achieve. And no matter what client she has, Lisa makes sure that no matter the, the skin condition is going on, that the makeup she applies and the technique she relies on will create seamless skin. And the fact that she now has an opportunity to deliver that vision and that intention with her own makeup products is like Lisa Eldridge is here with me and applying the eyeliner. That's what I feel like. Ooh, that's gorgeous. I'm looking shiny. Now, did I need Crystal Nebula? No, I could have been fine with either Solar Light or Cosmic Rose. I overdid it. I did not need to buy three highlighters, most definitely. This was just out of my own, just for my own curiosity to see the differences. If you have wanted to see the difference. So if you want it, if you're me or lighter, yes, Crystal Nebula will work. Even Cosmic Rose, I feel. If you want it to look more pinky than champagne, then definitely go with Cosmic Rose. But if you want it a little more warmth, especially if you're my shade and maybe one or two shades deeper, then solar light would be beautiful. And if you happen to be lighter and you want it solar light anyway, I would just apply it lower on the cheeks so that it could create like that beautiful like burst of shine without looking textured at all. Look at it. Bam, bam, 
Bam. All right, we still have, ooh, we're 40 minutes in. Okay, get it together. We have a few lip products here. I didn't go too crazy with the lip products because I still have not finished the lip products from last fall. I ordered two, let me see here. No, what did, what did I do? Okay, we got three, I think, gloss embraces, or do we have two? We got three gloss embraces and two luxuriously lucent lip colors. I want to go into the lip colors. I picked up Spirited Away, which, hold on, Lisa herself said was inspired by the actual Spirited Away movie. This is my favorite Miyazaki film. Hands down. I can't decide if it... Ugh. Howl's Moving Castle is like... But I think this is my favorite. I will see this movie every day of my life if I wanted to, if I could. And I wouldn't mind one bit. So to know that Lisa watched this too, I think it matches Chihiro's uniform too. Let's take a look at it. Let's take a look at it. We still have the same beautifully designed brushed gold component with the Lisa Eldridge logo on the top of the cap. Oh yes, I do think this very much kind of like resembles Chihiro's uniform and just the overall like color theme of the movie but we'll go to Lisa's description because she will not lead us astray with that an easy to wear creamy formula that's perfect for summer here we go let it da -da -da, spirited away $36 for each shade I'm sorry sorry product details product details uh, 18 months suggested shelf life 3.5 grams and made in Italy. A modern rosewood which traverses the color spectrum from brown to red to pink with a warm tone underscoring. <laughs> yes, I got a little bit of the, the vinyl on. Let me wipe that off. Be very gentle here. Oh, this is so fun. It's not like, it's almost like a tint this is so summer appropriate and you could go nuts you don't have to worry about being overly neat like i feel i have to with her her matte formula oh that's i am so happy i got spirited away i can detect the the generous spectrum of brown red and pink absolutely it's so beautifully smooth no fragrance thank god like silk on the lips in, am I wearing a bomb? Am I wearing a lipstick? I don't know. I feel Lisa definitely infused the two in terms of experience and feel. The look though, definitely giving you more than a bomb. It's not like super shiny, but has the right amount of shine. Insanely comfortable. So everyday appropriate, especially for summer. You know, if you want to give a little bit of a lip, not too much, just to know that the lips are there and ready. Well, spirited away. Next one, we have Songbird. Is it Songbird? No, Painterly? Yes, Painterly. Let's pull that one up. We have, ooh, a chiroscuro tint inspired by age-old artist pigment. A deep mauve chocolate hue with a blue undertone enhances lip tone for a just bitten look. I was looking at my gloss embraces and I forgot that I bought two affairs because I love affair in the lip velvet. So the gloss looked absolutely perfect. So here we have Painterly. Uh, yes, getting a little more brown than we are from Spirited Away. I just love applying this lipstick. I mean, the actual application is to die for. But look, this reminds me, hold on, of a lip color I love so much from the Suku Fluid Lip Fog line, the number seven. It's like a similar type of mauve like plummy brown, gives nice richness to the to the lips but it doesn't overwhelm the complexion meaning i don't feel compelled to like put mascara on even whereas some lip colors it's like ooh, maybe i should put a little shadow maybe a little liner mascara no the right amount of depth without feeling inclined to apply anything else maybe a little bit of dante's dream or venetian red maybe this though is absolutely perfect i'm happy i got painterly I was, I was, I was worried. I was like, am I going to really like this? Grown and sexy lip tint right here. Now we have the gloss embrace. 
that released last fall as a new addition and formula to the Lisa Eldridge line of lip products. These retail each for $25, 4.5 milliliters, 36 months on the, the on the shelf, not too bad. And also mini Dolly. Songbird is a light beige putty pink inspired by 60s song tresses, song tresses, like Francois Hardy and Jane Birkin. I'm applying this solo, but I could only imagine like how pretty it will look with Muse. That's my other favorite shade from Lisa. Ooh, looking pink. Oh yes. I'm so happy to see this color because uh, where there is another one that was a little too peachy for me. This though is like a nice warm pink that doesn't look ashy on the lip. Spring, summer appropriate. Feels really nice. Not super long lasting. That's something I noticed about the gloss embrace and maybe why people are not, some people are not crazy about it. The shine kind of wears quickly for me but i do appreciate the feel and how my lips feel hydrated and i think this product too is a little bit of a hybrid moment where lisa combines lip nourishing properties with the actual balm color of things this is like the everyday gloss for me and i prefer this over the fenty because the fenty smells like crazy candy and i can't one of the other new shades of fair earthy soft Caramel brown. Easy going, cool girl vibes. You know what that means. 90 vibes. That's why I got two. I had to. I mean, what if, what if this was like the most devastatingly beautiful lip gloss of my entire life and I only got one and then they sold out and I couldn't get another one? Don't even think about it, fam. It's too devastating. Okay, affair. <gasps> oh, this I feel has a little more color then Songbird, just as I suspected, amazingly, perfectly beautiful. Can definitely indicate a little more brown, but I like that a lot. I'm happy I got both Songbird and Affair because I want it like best of both worlds. I wanted the pink, I want a little bit of the pink brown. Oh, and can you imagine this over either painterly or spirited away i guess i'm just gonna keep this on for the rest of the day and keep reapplying because it is so pretty effortless i am feeling like a cool girl with all these liquid blush and liquid highlighter products on my face all right fam that was our lisa eldridge seamless skin first impression haul try on if you've already received your products let me know down below i think well let me know because i definitely still want to have our blush jam so not only will we feature and play with pat mcgrath divine blush let me know international customers if you received your packages yet because i'll definitely wait i'll keep pushing the live until we've received our product and we can have fun together and if you receive your lisa eldridge seamless skin liquid blush and elevated glow highlighter products so we can just have a party apply every everything together cocktail the lisa elge and the pat mcgrath it's gonna be so much fun let me know what the timeline is looking like i'll set up the live we'll get the blushes and we'll just have a party and find out what are other people's favorite combinations if they like to put desert orchid on top of i don't know dante's dream <gasps> don't even or flirtatious with pink soap my heart we'll get that live set up and as far as the products that i tried today again this is a first impressions but i wasn't expecting anything less from lisa i knew that if i wasn't going to be crazy about it i knew i at least was going to like it because lisa takes her product development very seriously and the fact that these are cheek products again she's all about creating seamless skin blurred perfected no matter what your skin condition is that she will create a product that's going to help combat those issues and just make you feel beautiful no matter what and and how these products just applied like a dream and again the shades are so intentional I love all of them. I'm happy that I bought all six of the liquid blushes. Didn't need to buy all three liquid highlighters and that's nothing about the formula. 
I just think, you know, for what I know I'm going to use, it will probably have been more financially advantageous for my wallet to just stick to one. But I knew if you were still maybe waiting on someone that's your skin complexion to try on the highlighters because you had a hard time deciding between the three, then hopefully this video will help with your decision. I will see you down in the comments, fam. And until then, that is a wrap. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this video helped. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and maybe consider subscribing to my channel. And until then, I will see you on here again with another review tutorial, blush jam extravaganza, monthly favorites, or lunchtime chit chat. Take care, and I will see you again soon.